welcome to Plugin Along, a stream dedicated to Lotro plugins. Last time on Plugin Along, we fixed a few bugs in the Deed Tracker companion import window. Uh, and today we're going to finish up uh, by improving the feedback that happens, which is currently non existent, when uh, the Lotro companion desktop application thinks we've finished a Deed that the Deed Tracker doesn't know about. Because that feels like useful information. Um, one of the one of the things that making the deed tracker has been a, a challenge for that is that there are more deeds in the game that than are maybe should be displayed in a deed tracker. Um, sometimes those are deeds that have been uh, never actually were, went live, like the good to bad critter slayer, which is in deed tracker because I thought it was going to be a real thing. And sometimes there are older versions of class deeds and now they've been replaced, but some people have really old accounts, and sometimes they'll have completed a deed that I just is not completable anymore. And so, uh, if that happens, it would be neat to produce some sort of message saying, "Hey, if you would like to send this to <laughs> lotrodechecker at gmail.com, just copy paste this message. Uh, that'd be great." <laughs> so that's what we're going to work on. Um, as always, uh, feel free to jump into chat with your thoughts and questions, and. In the meantime, let's get started. Okay. So, we're here in Glen Helic. I really like the topography of this area. Uh, I really like what they, they can do with it because, of course, if you've played Lord of the Rings Online, you know that, uh, and, and are at all familiar with the world of Middle Earth, you, you recognize that they have done some squishing of distances. For instance, a classic example, the distance between the the, the ferry the um, in the Shire. Let me pull it up here. The difference between the Buckleberry Ferry here and the bridge. Can I get the little thing to hover? Just show me that point of interest. <laughs> well, uh, the distance between that ferry and the bridge are, in the book is something like leagues and leagues and leagues. And of course, we can make our, our way there in about 30 seconds. So all the distances are squished in the in the service of making the game fun and engaging and not having to spend like two weeks on the road between Bree and, and Rivendell, like real time. Uh, and so because of that squishing, you can go uh, up steeper uh, paths than are feasible in the real world, and you can go uh, get a lot of vertical distance very quickly in this game. So that path down here, the, this bridge, leads into the into the woods, and then you just, it feels like in game you just go up and around a corner and you're here. And of course it helps that the town itself has this gentle rise to it. But yeah, it's uh, you get some very neat uh, topography to play with. Anyway. Not that that has anything to do with deeds, but I think it's neat. Okay, so what do we have? We have our carrot menu, which leads to system and plugin manager, or you can type slash plugins space manager, or what some people do will be to reassign one of these buttons down here to the, uh, to the plugin manager. Uh, for instance, maybe you don't need Gandalf here, or maybe you don't need this uh, character panel because C will do the same thing, whatever. I've so far resisted doing that, not for any particular good reason, just, I don't know, momentum. Alright, we're going to go ahead and load up the deed tracker so we can see what we're talking about. Excellent. It is here. Okay, so, right now, they're the only way to trigger an import from the uh, Lotro Companion is by loading the plugin. We were looking at that last week. What would it be the, like to trigger a refresh um, while the plugin is loaded? Going to the options page, for instance, and hitting a button. But a problem is, if you are loading or saving a file during the lifetime of a plugin, uh, after the plugin is loaded, but before it is unloading, then you can expect a good 10 to 15 second delay between pressing a button to do the thing and the thing happening. And so if we had a button saying, check for this file, um, our plugin will take a good 10 to 15 seconds to get told by the game, okay, it's loaded. You can go do something with it. Oh, nice. 
A little redhead in chat says, I changed two of my buttons at the bottom. I left Gandalf, good choice, but to the left, uh, I changed them to plugin manager and reputation panel. Uh, that's a good choice. Um, character panel, we already have the C shortcut. I use the C uh, shortcut on my, my keyboard so often, I forget this button is even there. And then the reputation panel, uh, quest log, uh, again, has a default binding of L that I think is what I use 100% of the time. I don't even remember this button exists. So changing that to plugins and reputation, I think it's a solid choice. Uh, especially because deed log, the, the default shortcut is something like uh, control something? No, shift. Shift uh, whatever the key that is. For me it's N, but uh, my keyboard's different. Um, yeah, so having, having a direct link to it, that makes sense. Uh, social panel, eh, O's fine. Crafting panel, I don't need that. Yeah, so many of these I should reassign, and I just haven't yet. Maybe I should do that. Then I'll have to remember to actually do it, to, to make use of it. All right, not, not right now. <laughs> okay, so we were, uh, because the change was bigger, we kind of uh, poked around at what it would look like and put that into the to-do list. Um, and, I believe that was part of the, the commit. So, um, da, 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 da. here we go. Yeah, so part of this was um, when the button's clicked, we need to remember to disable the button until we're done checking for the existence of this file. We need to give some sort of visual indication that we're doing something, maybe even a textual indication that says this could take a while. Uh, that might be even part of it before we even click. Like, if you click this, just be prepared to wait 15 seconds. Uh, all of that. And then we need to have some sort of visual response. Because if we find uh, the file, we can just pop, pop up the window to do something with it. But if we don't, we could either pop up an empty window or uh, might maybe just say, you know, nothing, nothing found. So all that is more complicated than was worth doing right now. All right, so we have some uh, updated notes here. Let's go ahead and commit that to do file changes. All right. Mm. Tillerian says, just out of curiosity, could you explain to me how you get the ID of a deed in the German client? I think your question is, given text in the uh, quest channel that says the German version of completed and then blah, how I backtrack that to be the same thing as the English version of 10 years in Middle Earth. Uh, because internally the deed has the same ID, whether it's English or French or German. So I think the question is, how do I do that lookup to identify which specific deed it is? Double, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Ah. Tillerian has already figured it out. Tillerian's uh, poking at the code. But yes, the deed to ID um, let's see. Yeah, the deed names to ID dot Lua is a very large lookup table. It's got about 3,400 entries in it. And it is a, a one to many. Ah, you did not figure out where the check is done. Cool. So um, this is a one, first of all, this is a one to many lookup table. So given, uh, let's go for the obvious, Wolf Slayer. <laughs> Um, if you complete something called Wolf Slayer, it is uh, three different deeds and I think a quest in the North Downs. Fantastic. There's cats tussling behind me. Oh, I think they just came on screen. They are being goofy. <laughs> okay, so when we're trying to backtrack how does a plugin work, it can be really useful to, to find some names of variables that are in use. Oh, Tlerian, uh follows up. I wondered how you handled, for instance, the, the gendered uh, conjugation of deed names, Bezwinger, uh, Bezwingerin, De Wolfe. Uh, yeah, let's pull that up, actually. Uh, so let's go ahead and pull that up. Um, and we'll go ahead. Okay. Um, 
This is as good enough example as anyway. So we have Bezwinger de Wolfe und Schattenwolfe. Cool. Sounds like a Dunlin kind of a deed. Um, the the key for that is that um, there's we split apart the entries. So the the deed name can appear in one of two possible ways. So they both get an entry. So for every Bezwinger, uh, uh, Bezwinger, we get a Bezwingerin. Uh, for the feminine conjugation of that um, in this sentence. Wait. Oops. Um, so that's that was the uh, that's the magic that makes this work. And we can see in the German version we expand to 4,100 entries because every one of those gendered conjugations for deed names gets double entry in both German and French. Um, a lot of a lot of D names don't have multi, uh, have variations, uh, but for those that do, um, you'll see Bezwinger, de Wolfe und Schatte Wolfe, and Bezwingerin, de uh, Wolfe und Schatte uh, Wolfe. Apologies to any German speakers. Uh, I'm going to be saying the German words with a Dutch accent, which is probably terrible on your ears. So, Tillerian, hopefully that answers uh, how we do the gendered uh, differentiation in uh, quest names. Uh, so if we're trying to figure out, okay, we have this lookup table, uh, how are we making use of it? One of the easiest things is just to say, where do we use this variable? This is a big table called names to IDs. Where do we use it? And first of all, we can eliminate the three places where this is populated in the German and the English and the French. So now we only have two, two files, main.lua. Uh, and in that case, we just have um, a copying from the data files namespace to global namespace because uh, this was easier than hunting down and changing every everything after I did some file moving. That needs to uh, be removed as we see to do, get rid of them. So really we're just talking about plugin functions. Um, so get deed indices uh, and we have character and deed name uh, which is to say given the thing and given these things about the character, get a list of deeds we could have just possibly completed. And let's see. It is really just these four references here um, in get deed indices. So we have, we have the name of a deed that we just completed. Let's get a list. Now, sometimes that list will be zero because um, we're looking at the quest channel. And for that, naturally, we get quest completions as well as deed completions. And so um, a, lot of, a lot of times you'll complete something, it's not even a deed. So you'll get zero, uh, a table of zero entries from this function. Results will be empty. Uh, but sometimes it will have a matching entry. And so um, a lot of times there's only one thing it could be with that name. Um, but we do have Wolf Slayer and the like, uh, you know, Brigand Slayer, Spider Slayer. Um, prior to Rise of, um, even after Rise of Isengard, I think around the time Rohan started coming out, uh, there was a shift in how deeds were named. Because you start getting things like Spider Slayer of the East of Net, Spider Slayer of the West of Net, uh, Spider Slayer of the Great River. They start giving location names or other ways to differentiate uh, what would otherwise be the 17th <laughs> deed called Spider Slayer, right? Spider Slayer. So that's just a guess. I don't know. Um, but Spider Slayer, we can see, has uh, seven entries. <laughs> Spider Slayer Vance also has seven entries, but then you start getting things like Spider Slayer of Linkvis, uh, Spider, Sl Spider Slayer of the East of Net, and so on. Um, so, yeah, around one of the, the Rohan expansions, you start getting that differentiation. But up until then, even up in, as far as Rise of Isengard, it's just Spider Slayer. <laughs> and uh, so when you see something completed Spider Slayer, the, you know it could be a deed, <laughs> but uh, your, your quest is not done yet. Uh, one of the things that helps us is we know internally if we think you have completed some of these uh, um, IDs. So we only have to concern ourselves with the ones that we don't think are completed. Uh, and we also know uh, anything in the uh, Eriador or Ravanian or uh, Gondor or Mordor 
um, uh, tabs, those are very much location based. So if you are in Breeland, you probably did not just complete Spider Slayer of the Troll Shaws, for instance. Um, and so uh, we have a different disambiguation window that we can pop up with emphasis of like, well, you're in Breeland, so we think it was Spider Slayer, you know, for Breeland. But just in case, here are the other ones it could be. Uh, because uh, plugins don't get to know where you are in the world very easily. The best thing we have is looking at the region chat channel, uh, which one you are in. Uh, so, let's see. I think we do not know where I am. Uh, but we can see, um, because uh, we haven't told the... Uh, I haven't told D-Tracker about Cardolan or Swanfleet. It, it knew I was in an instance, and then it was like, well, I don't know where you just went to. That was uh, Cardolan. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, Tillerian, that was a lot of words. I hope that answered your question. Um, when we see something is completed, we look to see if it has an entry in the table for whatever language we're running on. If there's at least one entry in the table, we start looking at which one of those we don't think are already complete. If there's at least one that is not already complete, then we have a couple of options. If there's exactly one, we say, that was it, done, and pop up the completion window. If there's more than one, there's a couple of possibilities. There are a few very rare deeds where there are two deeds of the same name, uh, for like the Mines of Moria deed. There's a class deed, and then there's a um, epic deed maybe. And you complete them both at the same time, uh, from the same conditions, uh, and so they're kind of a, a paired thing. And so for that one, if you uh, have those two and they're paired with each other uh, for a couple of cir circumstances, then we just mark them both complete. Uh, otherwise, if there's two or more, then we have to pop up a window saying, which of these did you just do? Because we can't tell. Tillerian, correct. Um, when you're, I believe, when you're in the game, you only see the name of the German or French deed that corresponds to the sex of your character. So if you, uh, within the gender binary, if you made a, a male character, you'll only see the male conjugations for those deed names. And you can see that by opening up your deed log and finding one of these deeds and just looking at the name. And it's only the Bezwinger de Wulfe, uh, or the Bezwingerin der Wolfe. Um, and so this character in the binary is female, so when I load up the German client, I just see Bezwingerin der whatever. But Redhead says, during my stream, it was mentioned that maybe the Lotra Companion could show how far along you are on a hidden deed. I'm looking at my Lotra Companion and not seeing it. Any thoughts? Yeah, sure, I've got thoughts. First of all, I'll open up the wrong thing. I'll click on the Lotra Compendium instead of the, the Lotra Companion. Okay, so we got the Lotra Companion. I haven't actually done an import since last week, so let's go ahead and I'm just gonna open up my vault, my wardrobe, and my shared storage because those don't get pulled down from the server until the first time you open them up. Then I'll hit the import button, which opens up the import screen, and I'll hit start. Now this will take a minute to run, and can sometimes work irregularly, especially if you have uh, done a bunch of things since you logged on uh, before doing the import. But all of my adventure in Cardolan didn't matter. Results, import finished. Great. Now we're gonna come into Aphidil on Treebeard, pop that open. Come on open to deeds, and I might ask, just show me the deeds that I have that are underway, but not completed. And we can see all of these. When I look at one of these deeds, uh, Brood Queen Slayer Advanced, if I double click on that, I get a window that pops up saying Brood Queen, Brood Queen Slayer Advanced, 29 out of 50. So here's where I can see how many increments I have done on that deed. Uh, and while I don't think I have any hidden deeds, let's see, hidden, yes. I have no hidden deeds on which I have progression. <laughs> uh, 
Um, but I think it would work the same way. If the information is available, it would be visible by double clicking one of these and seeing what's up. Uh, apparently, well, that's interesting. So we can see I have the vocation armsman in progress because I completed the prospector tutorial. Um, interesting, or at least so thinks the Lotro companion. Oh, Little Redhead says, I do see it. Thank you. Awesome. I'm glad to hear it works the same way for those hidden deeds. Um, Little Redhead was on the uh, Life Beyond the Shire stream was commenting on having not quite finished some of the uh, hidden social deeds where you either are emoted at by another player or you emote to an NPC. And it can be very frustrating to be like, well, do I need one or a hundred? And so this is a way to kind of peek into that and say, oh, I'm at 93 out of 100, I'll keep going. Or, oh my goodness, I only have seven, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> For instance. Okay, so, great question. So Tillerian, just to uh, uh, circle back around, Please let me know if I did not fully answer your question or if you're still uh, confused about how um, either D-Track War works or how the game works in that case. Uh, I think, I, I hopefully I hit all of that. Little Redhead says, that was it. exactly it. I wanted to make sure it was progressing and I wasn't missing something. So the real question is, uh, where are you? Are you in the 90s? Are you, <laughs> are you in the fives? Yep, as Aaron Barb says, how many laughs to go? <laughs> 130 out of 200. Uh, we were so good when we first started. We were so good about every day, every day. Because um, most of the deeds are maybe five increments a day. A couple of them are like two increments a day, but you need fewer, so it works out to the same number of days. But on Treebeard, the first couple of months, we were so good about do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, every day, do it, do it, do it. But then Little Red had changed which character was her main. And that character kind of came in after we were done obsessively uh, doing those emotes, doing those emotes, doing those emotes, and has languished ever since. Partially completed. So sad. Yeah, Social Guy is a very nice uh, plugin um, for this kind of thing. Um, who did Social Guy? Let's see. I guess I should have left the plugin compendium open. All right, so she'll go. Radicus, great. Um, I'm going to, instead of installing it, I'm going to copy the one I've got because I have a um, patched version. Uh, and so if I come on in here to social guy, we can see it says it's ready to party, 188 emotes. Um, and right click on that. And when you are looking here, we can see blue are the social titles. And the, the default social guy on Lotro Interface is uh, not quite a complete list. And so I think this is the patched version that has that. But again, the uh, version number not, not, uh, doesn't look very patched, so I'm not sure. Uh, and anyway, so you would just go through and, you know, angry. Uh, Angry, 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 bag, 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 board, 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 bow, 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 about five times each. Um, and you just gotta be careful because you can go too much and the game's like slow down, uh, especially when you have such a, a convenient interface for doing them all. And, but yeah, it was super easy just to pop this up or it was so early in the game that we didn't have a, bu a bunch of icons cluttering up our bar. So instead of all these, you know, <laughs> mentoring uh, instruments and mounts, it would just be all of the, all of the uh, uh, emotes that my target was looking for uh, and vice versa. And so every time my target finished one, as we got close to that uh, ending period of 20 days or so, just toss it off, toss it off, toss it off. So I was just doing the ones that my target needed. But. Then we uh, were like, okay, done with that, never doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> and Rosenblum is sad. Okay, cool. <laughs> now, a convenient thing, and I don't know if this was intentional or if they changed it at some point, but if you are working on those social deeds and you don't have someone to pair up with and just do them at each other, you can do them at NPCs. When you 
uh, if you're a subscriber, uh, when you go to talk to Wenda, just emote at her. Uh, run through all the emotes. Uh, but you can do it to, I think, pretty much any NPC. Um, if you are able to click on them, so for instance, I'm able to click on that one, I should be able to emote at them and get credit for those deeds. Uh, and so you do not need to pair up with other players, although it is fun to do so. It's fun to just go in and go run through all those emotes. Okay, awesome. So, Tillyrian, I'm gonna hope that I answered your question. Pop up again if you, uh, if you think I did not. And in the meantime, let's come on in and take a look. Oh, hey, Tillyrian. This is my deed tracker, and deed with a gender specific name will not get caught catch in German since the male version does not match the string in the ID file. Interesting. Um, Tillyrian, can you copy in the completion text from completing the deed? Because I admit, I did not uh, necessarily check that uh, any time recently. Um, and can you copy, like, com your version of completed, blah. Uh, I would love to uh, take a look at that. Um, if you don't have one, that's fine. Um, um, I have done some assuming uh, to make that work. Let's see. I wonder if I haven't. It's not easy for to switch over, switch over to the German client at the moment, so I'm going to hold off on that. But let me make a note. Dun, dun, dun. and says you'll try, you don't have it on hand. That's okay. Uh, the next time you complete a deed, if you could, a, a gendered deed, um, if you would be willing to send that over to me, um, you could do it on, on the plugin Discord, but you can also, in the uh, deed tracker um, plugin, you can you can catch my email here. Uh, just send it off to, there we go, lotrodeedtracker at gmail.com. That's fine too. I'd love to to get a live sampling of one of those gender deed names from you to make sure that I'm, uh, my logic is correct. Because I thought you would only see the one or the other in the chat channel. If you see the combination of the two of them, that's even easier. All right, Aaron Bard. In general, great question. In general, patches have the minimum amount necessary to alter the original. And that's actually by request of Lutcher Interface. Because when these sites went up, you know, probably 15 years ago or so, uh, space was more of a consideration than uh, than than now, uh, and bandwidth is still a consideration for many people. So if you know the patch can be two kilobytes instead of 50 kilobytes uh, each time someone downloads it, it adds up for a site that's primary purpose is distributing files. That being said, if we come on over to Social Guy, um, we can see both of these, uh, and so what we want is to download Social Guy uh, and also download the uh, patch version. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and go to our downloads uh, folder and unzip both of them. I'm just going to use the Windows built-in extract all. Thank you. And extract all. Fantastic. So. I like to use two uh, windows um, to uh, make it a little bit easier myself. So I have a from you know, a source and a destination. So we're going to documents, Lord of the Rings Online uh, plugins. And in the first one, we have Radicus plugins. So I'm just going to move it on over here. And then in the uh, 2.20.1, I'm going to go ahead and move that one over. Destination has three files with the same name, replace. And we can see that size difference here. The original plugin had 15 kilobytes of files. The patch only modifies five kilobytes of them in the, uh, in the zip files. So now that we have Radicus plugins and we have uh, moved over the patch files as well, we can come refresh and social guy is here. So, well, I can't tell you if it is different. <laughs> oh, I can tell you because the version number has gone from version 2.20 to 2.20.1. Apparently, I was running patchless. Whoops. That's funny given that I'm the one who patched it. 
Um, and so that patch, if we're ever curious about what these patches do, um, I'm actually going to re-extract since I did some moving there. And extract, great. If we're ever curious about what's different, if you have a file comparison utility installed, uh, I use beyond compare, I'm just gonna select left side, select uh, compare to, and I get a window that says, here's what's up. Now all of the files, let's see, I only want the different files, well we can see that. Um, so um, the emotes.lua changed, um, the window.lua changed, this was a gratuitous change on my part. The original window had used what we call magic numbers. Uh, just 1, 11, 24, 28. And you have to kind of deduce what's, you know, why do these numbers exist? What do they mean before you can start changing them? And so I went ahead and created some constants, mood minimum, mood maximum. And that corresponds with in-game uh, all of these mood angry, mood apprehensive, uh, mood surprised, and so on. Then we have the social ones, we have uh, the northern daily, uh, and I used min and max, and start and stop might have been uh, a little bit more fluent choices. Uh, but it, it's the minimum number uh, for indices, so eh, it, whatever. Uh, and that's, that's how these colors are coming into play here. But when I wanted to change them, I needed to uh, go ahead and either just change them to more magic numbers, which I just did not want to do, or name those variables and then uh, take care of that. Uh, so we can see the mood min here, mood uh, max. Uh, we have a, uh, some mood counts. Uh, so we have the counts up here, uh, how many we think we have of those. And then we can just do some math. So the min, the math, uh, the max is going to be the minimum plus the count minus one because uh, uh, that's uh, just going to catch you up if you don't do that. Social min, so social math. So so um, these can be calculated. Um, and the only thing we need to worry about are the counts. How many do we think we have of these? I also added the comments to be like, hey, this is the thing you got to do. So uh, what else changed? That was it, those two files. We also had the plugin version where uh, 2.1 got updated and there was a typo, the social, the social titles. Yeah, figured it, might as well fix that. And that's it. Um, so that's a, that's a nice way to kind of say, what did a patch do? Is just get a comparison utility uh, and then kind of see file by file, what was added, what was removed, which files were the, uh, still there, but the contents changed. Uh, and we can see that was a very small patch. Uh, basically two source files changed. One of them was just numbers to variables. The other was a little bit more complicated. But when you're done with that, um, when you have that patch, then you have the correct and complete list of these emotes. Well, I guess we kind of breezed right by that. What emotes did I add? Uh, apparently, a bow and cheer were missing, as was laugh and salute, and hug was incorrectly in there. And so anyone who was using Social Guy would have completed 12 out of the 16 uh, social deeds on their target. Four others would have been missing, and they would have been needlessly hugging, which, you know, it's, it's, it's good to do so, but you're not getting any deed credit for that. Um, and... So bow moved on in here. Cheer was missing from the big list. Um, laugh was missing. Salute was missing. No. Oh, sorry. These were in the big list and they needed to come up into the emote list. Perfect. Now, it wouldn't surprise me if uh, many emotes in the game were missing out of this list because they've been added since then. But that was, that was out of scope for what I was trying to do, which was just social deeds. <laughs> Make those social deeds work. Okay. So, cleaning up my downloads, just delete those. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and delete that out of my plugins for now. So hopefully that was an answer, Aaron Bird. And back to D-Tracker. Bird 
So that was a very full answer. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Okay. Um, so Tellurian, I've got a note here to try and replicate the problem, and that's pretty easy. Uh, just take a you know high-level character um, over to the Shire and kill some spiders in uh, in Scary. So I, I I should be able to replicate that uh, one way or the other and see what it looks like to see a gendered uh, deed name completion come through and figure out what I'm doing wrong because the automatic um, completion I had hopes that it was just working on French and German, and it sounds like maybe it's not. Uh, Arda over to scary and defeat some spiders in French and German. Cool. Oh. Answer and I'm looking at it. Let's come in here first of all. So, Gobsnaka Bezwinger, Mittelschwer, again, apologies, um, certainly appears in here. And so, the next question is what else are we doing wrong? Because um, just based off of the textual comparison, uh, I guess the first question would be that hyphen. Hyphens, there's a couple different hyphens that appear, and sometimes uh, the German hyphens don't match up with the English hyphens. But that was copy-pasted from you, it sounds like. The second question is uh, in our strings file. <coughs> Excuse me. So, we're going to come on into our strings file and see what we have for that completed note. Well, I have aufgeschlossen. And that is correct. Now there's a space there, so I'm curious how chat completed is used. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at that. Coming into chat logger. does work for non-gender specific deeds. It's interesting, I was just noticing that we are not removing the space before Globsnaga Bezwinger and Mitchell Uh You have a space after the colon and uh, before the name of the deed. And we are replacing in the message chat complete to nothing. Uh, we remove any addition to the line characters, and if deed mark complete, just gives that. So I'm worried about that space. I'm wondering about that. You say it does work for non-gender specific deeds. That's fascinating to me because with the text that you gave, we should get this deed ID. That's interesting. I'll play around with that, Tillerian. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. Aaron Bard says, quick clarification. You put new plugins into plugins, not plugins data, correct? Yes, that is correct. So what you want to see is in your documents, Lord of the Rings online folder, there are two things that will say plugins, but both of these are missing on a fresh install. Uh, what you're looking for is plugins, uh, is where all your plugins will live. If your plugins save or load information, that's going into plugin data. And it behaves very similarly to, if you're used to a computer, to your program files directories and your documents directories. 
your, your plugins are in one place and your data is in another. So you can delete a plugin without deleting the data that goes with the plugin. Oh, Telerian, you have brought, you have, uh, sorry, Telerian, you are possibly working, probably working with a different version. And I think I broke some of the gender stuff. Um, in fact, I, I bet I have it in my readme file that I fixed that. And then I forgot that I did it. Some German and French gender deed names were incorrectly stored. This meant automatic deed detection did not work. This has been addressed. You are absolutely seeing a thing that I forgot uh, about completely. Let's uh, let's look at what you're seeing actually. D tracker. So if I go ahead and download this thing, it's one of the one of the improvements that is coming with this uh, upcoming release. Uh, so what happened um, is the deed info no deed names to IDs. Let me just go ahead and open this up. Uh, the process by which I used to generate those uh, Telerian um, was um, incorrect. And so you're absolutely seeing um, what should have happened is each of these should be their own entry and the thing that, that is supposed to split them up um, did not do it correctly. And so they just got a single entry. And since you're only seeing um, Globstamba, Bezwinger, um, there is there's not a direct match, uh, and that that is getting fixed. So uh, that that is that is exactly why it's not working. Is where um, it is non-trivial uh, to figure out which of these is male and which of these is female. Um, in, in the way that this is currently stored. So it needs to look at it in a different way, and, and it didn't. Uh, so you were bringing up a bug that uh, was a real bug, and it has not been published yet, uh, but I fixed it like a, a long enough ago that I completely forgot that it was a bug. <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna get that fixed, and gendered deeds are going to be working again in German and French. But uh, thank you, thank you for uh, making me go through the mental process of figuring out what is going on. Okay. Um, yeah, because that's the thing that I really, I really appreciate being able to have support for uh, German and French deeds. Um, even if, if I don't you know, speak much of any French or German. Okay, um, neat, awesome. Okay, phew. All right, <laughs> one thing done. <laughs> okay, so let's look at the consilience says, thank you for your time. You're welcome, this is, this is excellent. I love, I love knowing that the work that went into adding support for French and German was, uh, or is being used uh, out there, like, you know, it's nice to be able to say, ah, I can auto detect deeds in French and German, but it's even nicer to know that people are taking advantage of that, people are using it. The uh, deed tracker interface is mostly translated for German, almost not at all for French. So I don't know that anyone's using it for French because no one's approached me and been like, I would like to translate this for you. <laughs> um, and I haven't tried to go down the automatic translation route uh, and I know there are some options for that, but I am wary of incorporating automatically translated text without some sort of oversight, because there's just so many places where confusion or inaccuracies can come up. Um, and so I, I, get, I get hesitant about that. Um, okay, that one is done. That's done, that's done, great. One thing you can do though is, let's see, you can fake out the plugin. So if you just want to see what it looks like, you can come into the git client language and just return D. Uh, and so if I do that, 
I can go ahead and reload and now D Tracker is in German. So for the, those curious, uh, it would look more like this. And what's neat is you can get um, translated names for the factions and you can get translated names for the regions. Uh, and yeah, even, even the interface is mostly translated except for this is a difficulty server. Whoops, that's a newer one. Uh, yeah, so for anyone curious out there, you can you can uh, play around with what it looks like in German, uh, either by switching your client to German or just you know lying to the plugin. Neat. Okay. So back to English and done. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, there was an error on the German load. Oh, I should uh, I should fix that. Hang on. Um, back to globals. Yeah, let's replicate the error. And see if we can get the same mistake. Okay, um, it looks like the tooltip. Awesome. Let's come on into plugin functions. And we want to go to line 1121. And lore is a nil value. And so what I did was said if it's not equal to an empty string, what I should have said is if it's just truthy, um, I think. So let's come on in and reload that. Awesome. Yeah, that's a uh... I like that. So um, for the anniversary event, yeah, you should slice the Kleinen Kaiten Karte von Jahr 1 ab, and 2, and 3, and 4, and 5, and 6, and 7, and 8, and 9, and 10. Just do all of it. But we see another error that just popped up. Awesome. Let's come in into line 210. Oh, awesome. Oh, that was the tooltip window. There for one. And actually, I had another bug that I wanted to fix in that the little close button um, is no longer showing up. And I would very much like it to. So let's go ahead and reload this. OK, so when I pulled it off, I got that error, 210. Um, table index is null. Okay, self indices. Oh, yeah. I bet that doesn't work at all anymore. So we used to uh, use the IJK indexing for deeds as uh, a way of just saying, does this thing already exist? And that was to stop us from being able to tear off uh, the same thing multiple times in a row. Wow, yeah, it's all sorts of messed up. So what we want to do is come look at how the deed tooltip window does its thing. So we're just going on a tangent. Telerian, thank you for helping me find this bug. It's not the bug you're talking about, but it's definitely bugs that exist. Okay, so um, we're looking for indices. And so what we're looking for is self.indices. Why do we think there's a self.indices? Where did this come from? Uh, and so, 
If we do a search for indices, um, we have a main win, self.indices equals nil. Yeah, where, where on earth would this come from? So what we need instead is to figure out how is this populating its data. Uh, and so what we want is load deed. Here we go. We have self.id. So what we probably did was renamed indices to id uh, incompletely. And so let's go through and look at this. So what we really want is id, self.id, self.id, self.id. All right, and self.id. What else do we have? Um, mouse click, uh, close button. And we can see why that um, that close button may not even exist is we're doing, well, no, that would only happen on click. Still not sure why that close button's not there. But we're gonna go ahead and get self.id. Uh, and finally, we have a self.indices here. And we can see self.id, so that was probably missed as well. I'm gonna prematurely uh, change that as well. Let's go ahead and reload and see where we're at. First of all, awesome, we can tear off. Uh, we've got our little X button. We can do multiples of these, uh, but if we try to do the same one, it's just going to raise it up. So let's even, um, oh, right, those are always on top of, cool. Uh, we can see that raised the tooltip up to the foreground when we tried to tear it off again. Because I made the decision that I just didn't think it was uh, user friendly to be able to tear off the same deed multiple times, but different deeds, yes. Okay, um, neat, neat, neat. Ah, man, those anniversary events are going to take so long to finish on this server because this is a Treebeard server um, and we're not going to hit um, the Dead Marshes for a while. Okay, well, that was awesome. Uh, we found, um, we skipped ahead. Uh, so this was the uh, tooltip. Pulled off D tooltip for blah, blah, blah. It was missing the closing X button. It sure was. We're going to uh, commit this as a great change. Let's come on in to our source control. Um, as I mentioned before, I use a git repository. This is fork uh, from fork.dev uh, that wraps around it and is a nice UI. I worry because fork.dev was kind of a, a startup, like, like the hit with a big splash and was very simple and streamlined and was nice to use and a lot of people started using it. And they add features and they keep adding features. And I'm worried that at some point they're going to have added so many features that it's going to be the old crusty thing and then there's just going to be a new one that, that comes along and say, like, almost no feature, so easy to use. <laughs> and we're going to start the cycle all over again. Um, but in the meantime, it's very nice tool to use. Okay, let's come on in here and do a refresh. So, fixed how uh, fixed uh, tooltips need tooltips to not be broken. Okay, so this is D tooltips indices got to ID indices to ID indices ID indices to ID great and great. As it turns out, I don't think this was a German problem. I was probably seeing this on uh, English as well, um, but it, uh, maybe it was a little bit easier for me to see. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and do that as a separate commit. Fixed uh, nil uh, uh, string concatenation Impossible. Possible nil string cat nation. Hey, Kato. All right. Fixed. Um, 
variable rename, I missed variable rename, got that, awesome. And just for completeness, let's come on in here to our globals and pretend we are French. Great. All right, we can still tear stuff off, good. Tear off something else. Very nice, and then the X button does work. Fantastic. So in that case, I think we're gonna return to uh, English. And finally, we've got our tooltips here. Great. Where'd the other cat go? On the chair, okay. Cool. So, coming on back, we can see we have a clean working directory again. And one more bug that was uh, haunting me is gone. Okay. <laughs> Great sidetracking. That was on my uh, to-do list anyway, but it's nice to, uh, to see what's up. Okay. So, when we want to do an import, we want to go to Documents, The Lord of the Rings Online, Plugins, and we're going into Cube Plugins, it's me, uh, Deed Tracker, and we're finding the thing that says Import Deed Completion from Locho Companion. I'm not great at naming things, uh, but it works. Uh, if you have extensions turned on, you'll see .hta. If you have the type column on, you'll see it's an HTML application. There's someone questing here, excellent. Um, so, we're gonna go ahead and open this up. And anytime I'm regenerating my import file, all I'm doing is clicking the import button for Treebeard Affidil, which is this character, and I click import. And it reads in the, the stuff, writes out the file. So I'm gonna move that off screen so it's a little bit easier for me to get to, but that's all I'm doing, just clicking that import button. And when I do that, that will come in uh, to uh, Treebeard, uh, all character, no, sorry, uh, Affidil, and you'll get a, a Deed Tracker companion import. We can see that was just created. If I delete it, press that import button again, we get it again. So that file is what's being generated. But each time we load Deed Tracker, it'll read whatever's there and then clear the file out. And we can see that. Uh, here we can see that's 41 kilobytes and if I open it up it's gonna have a bunch of things that look like that but if I go ahead and reload we have the companion import window uh, and we can see that uh, D tracker uh, companion import is going to have its size changed um, we've got a little delay here going on uh, but there we go, now it's one kilobyte. And we come on over here and all we have is the content skip equals true. And that's what we're looking for. Is, the, is it empty? Does it have skip equals true? We have nothing to import. Otherwise, uh, we have stuff to process. So if I regenerate that, we get this back. So that's the life cycle of this file, which is why I'm gonna keep on needing to generate it uh, after every time I do this test. Okay, but, Um, I got, um, Krell sent me a file with a bunch of deed completions on it, and I was interested in giving that a try. Wait, where did it go? Oh, maybe it was in the other server. Where is that? Man, I probably should have, like, downloaded that file or something. Here we go. Oh, 
Oh, nice. And Krell, you sent me your actual import file. That's beautiful. Um, so, not surprisingly, it looks very similar uh, to the one I'm looking at, uh, except I'm guessing it's way longer. So, Affidils is 13, what, uh, 100 lines. This one is uh, more like 3,000 lines. So, just a little bit more. So, the first thing I want to do is unload the plugin manager and come on in and copy that file on over. Replace. So the first thing I want to do is just load it up and see what happens. Make sure that there's no bugs, issues, whatever. The tracker. Okay, so apparently Krell has completed 1,694 additional deeds that I have not. And I have completed 135 deeds uh, that Krell has not. Interesting. Get on that, Krell. Fair enough, some of them are Hobbit Deeds, um, Fortunate Festival of Fishes, uh, In League, Ill Association, oh, I'm just getting all sorts of insights. None of the Minstrel Deeds, I'm guessing they uh, are not a Minstrel. <laughs> now, one of the things I really like about this import process is how fast it is. So, if I click Import Completed Deeds, um, okay, it's slower with 1,694 of them, but most of that was from the chat messages because we spat out a chat message for every one of those. Normally you're missing 10 of them, not that many. Uh, but it's still a very, very much faster than going and clicking through uh, each and every one of them. So I like that. Okay, but what we didn't get was how many things were completed that we did not know about. And why is that? Well, it has to do with the, with the logic that we do here. Um, and so, if we do, wait, where's import? Check for companion import, that's the one we want. Okay. Um, da -da -da. Process companion import, great. So we look in all the deeds that we know about and do stuff with it. But what we don't do is look in all the deeds that are being given to us and see, do we know about them? And so what I would like to do is add something. Produce. Uh, let the user know if they have com companion completed deeds that we don't know about. It would be nice if they email it to me. So what do we need to do? We need to iterate through all of the deeds in that import list. And so companion import here um, is what we were passed in. And so we need a for loop for the ID and pairs um, companion import do end. And we can do that because I've lost my companion import. But besides that, we can do it. So we have just a table here, which is ID to status, ID to status, ID to status. And so we can iterate through the keys here. Um, and we don't necessarily care about the value, just is it, you know, get the ID. And with that, we can go ahead and check if D data has it. Local is deed present in deed tracker equals deed data um, our deed ID um, and not equal to nil. So deed data is coming from the uh, deed data file and so there's going to be something or that entry doesn't exist. And so we can just do a check for no. And now we can do something with that. Um, Right now, just a local uh, uh, missing deeds missing in deed tracker equals a new table. Uh, and then if not is deed present, then 
we want to go ahead and add that to the table. And I know there's a table.insert call that I can do. I just forget how to do it. So table.insert into deeds missing in deed tracker uh, the deed ID. And when you use a table.insert, I believe that it gives you a very friendly ind indexing. So you'll have a one, a two, a three, a four, and those entries will be the thing that you're inserting. And so it's really easy to get counts and iterate through them, uh, I think. We'll see. All right, so for each one, uh, and then if uh, the number of deeds missing is greater than zero, then uh, we want to go ahead and tell them. Now this is a place where we might want to use some strings. Um, so import Okay, so we're going to do a new entry, and for that we have an English entry. Okay, so what is that? Oh, uh, what's the name? Uh, deed missing in deed tracker. The following deed IDs are. The tracker did, did not recognize. Uh, the following indeed IDs. Please email them to, what was my email address? Please email this to lotrodeedtracker at gmail.com for inclusion in a future release. Okay, so we have a message to do and this is going to, to be a thing, and then we'll just spit out that list. What we'd really like is some sort of concatenation uh, function where we can just say, take that table and give it to me uh, in one uh, string. That might be possible to do. Uh, but in the meantime, we're gonna go ahead and info um, get string and whatever this was this was a lang I believe my goodness so many strings all right so the outer one is lang great And then companion import win. All right. So lang companion import win. And deed missing and deed tracker. Let's go ahead and uh, put this in two steps. So local output text equals that. And then info output text. But we want to con uh, add on to output text. Let's see. Uh. All right, so if I wanted to join a list of strings, we have table.concat and the thing that separates them. That sounds cool, let's try that. So local IDs equals table.concat, and we're doing 
this table, we want to separate it with a uh, comma space. And we'll go ahead and concatenate those here. And then we can info the output text. Awesome. Well, that might be all we need. Let's go ahead and um, replace that file. All right, back to a 92 kilobyte file. Awesome, let's come in and reload it. Awesome, DTracker did not recognize the following DIDs. Please email this to LotroDTracker at gmail.com for inclusion in a future release, blah. Now, it doesn't mean a lot to anyone, but those are IDs for deeds, and so that's very helpful. I'm gonna go ahead and copy that up. Thank you, Krell. Chances are I'm going to decide that those deeds are not actively available, but it would be nice if Krell could uh, you know, have them checked off. So what we're gonna do is come on over to to do. Uh, result, <laughs> all of those. And I'm gonna add some white space. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, we have 29 of them. Not bad. Uh, I thought it might be way more. Fun. Okay, so we have a feature now where if you do an import for from Lotro Companion, you might be given information that if you email it on to me, I'll be very happy to receive it and do, do something with that. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and uh, save off that by coming over to our source control. So, um, added check for deeds that LC knows about and DTD tracker does not. So for completed deeds. Ultra Companion knows about all of the deeds, but if, if no one's completed them, I don't know that it needs to go into the deed tracker. So we're gonna go ahead and include this and include this. Fantastic. Okay, so we have been streaming for about an hour and a quarter and so we're well past the halfway point here. Oh, fascinating. Oh man, hypertext applications are wonky. I dragged it, uh, the application over to the other screen, but the taskbar item stayed over on this screen, which it just should not do. Oh well. Um, okay, so. That being said, um, let's go ahead and first do a little bit of uh, tidying up of this to-do file. I think there's things in here that have been done, but we just haven't uh, come back and deleted it yet. So, DTRK doesn't seem to react to escape to close the window if the HUD is off. That's a live thing. I don't know if it's a bad thing, but it's a thing. Um, find uses of get deed. Check to see if they should be get deed or category. That's a, that's a real thing that needs to be done. Any place we're accessing care data stuff directly, add a helper function. Awesome, still need to look at that. And these were some last places to check uh, that uh, seemed like they would be uh, problem causing when we did the 2.0 to 3.0 file format. And here's what the actual file, file format was. So conversion from previous save file structure to the new one. Save existing files a backup, we do that transform existing structure to new structure. We've done that on stream. Only include completed deeds. Yes, saves a bunch of space for many players. Uh, increase the version from two to three. Uh, and if there's not a version in there, we need to add one. Okay, and we save the new structure to file. We do all of these things. So all of this uh, is good. And we can tell that from the uh, v3.0. So if it's 2.0, 
we come on in Come on the next line after IJK code changes. Oh yes. Thank goodness we came out back here. So let's go look at the deed indices to deed IDs version two. First of all, we're still importing that. Why are we importing that? Let's come on in and take a look at that. So uh, we're in prior save formats. And the question is, where is indices lookup being used? And the answer is a lot of places, maybe. Oh, those are comments. Fantastic. Okay, the uh, indices lookup is no longer being used by anything that isn't the version two to version three conversion code. So we can go ahead and finally do these things that are sitting around. So remove after IJK code changes. Done. But what's important is, um, actually, let's double check. Okay, just these two. Okay, so we're removing that. Awesome. Um, but indices lookup, this point here, uh, the prior save formats, um, oops, uh, we need to move this to where it's actually going to get used. And so, other thing we can do is save ourselves having to type prior save formats dot every single time. And it's a lot of them, as we just saw. Um, so we can copy from the prior save formats namespace into global namespace, and uh, then we don't have to worry about including that. There's a very sleepy cat over there. OK, so I think that looks uh, fine. Let's go ahead and first of all, reload just to make sure we're not missing anything. Great. And then we'll want to rerun a version two to version three import before it's all said and done. I want to make a note to that later. Um, rerun version 2.0 to version 3.0. Upgrade to confirm all is well. Awesome. So, um, we have to do uncomment next line after IJK, done. How many more to do's do we have? A few. Let's go ahead and remind ourselves. Resolve all remaining to do's. I had an interesting question from someone, um, maybe DT, I forget, um, who had deleted a character and created a character with the same name and was getting inconsistent deed tracker results. Because I never delete a character, so I never code that into my plugins to account for that. Uh, and Lotro doesn't tell you if a character is deleted, and Lotro doesn't delete plugin files if you do delete a character. But we, um, D-Tracker pays attention to what level a character is. And that's actually something that gets saved in the save file. So it would be very possible to compare the saved level with your current level. And if your current level is lower, pop up a dialog that says, hey, it looks like you deleted and recreated your character. If that's true, press this button to reset your, your save data. Um, and so that's a, that's a thing that I think is a, a good idea because apparently some people delete characters and those people who do that will occasionally create a new character with the same name. Fair enough. Okay, um, needed. So all of this stuff, um, we were just double checking that it was in there. Uh, 
so we uh, save a backup of the 2.0 file. Awesome. Let's go ahead and uh, yank this off here. Save an existing file backup. Done. Transform existing structure to the new structure. We definitely do that. Only include completed deeds. Increase the version. Uh, yep. We save the new structure to file. I want to think that we do that. We do a patch out of a save, yep. So we save it the new one to structure. Um, so we can just delete that because it's already done. All right, this looks like a thought. That I'm not ready to deal with yet. All right. Still valid. Change the object that looks at minimum level and know if it's cap level. Definitely need to do that. That might be a good one for next week. Um, which is to say, some deeds have a minimum level, but are also challenge deeds, um, so they have to be done at the cap level. And when I first made the deed tracker, I didn't distinguish between the two. Uh, um, the, the level that you needed to do it at was internally marked as cap if you uh, if you had to be at server cap level, but with the, especially Treebeard and Shadow Facts, that got us into trouble because some deeds, like the uh, Forsaken Inn uh, challenge, Inn of a Forsaken challenge, uh, Perfect Fellowship, has a minimum level of something like 80, and also you have to be at server cap. And so it's not available on a legendary server for quite some time. Uh, and generally, it seems like the pattern is a uh, minimum level for a deed uh, is tied very much to what was the, uh, for, for a challenge deed, what was the server cap at the time when that deed came out. So it was just, you know, it was marked that way, is what it seems to me. Uh, and so when legendary servers come out uh, and for content, uh, you know, they get access to the Lone Lands right away. But the end of the Forsaken, came out at a later time in, in server progressions. And so you have that dis this mismatch where you can go into the Inner Forsaken, but the minimum level of some of the deeds uh, doesn't match the server cap at the point where you can get access to it. It's, um, you know, it's a thing that is true about deeds is what it seems. Um, okay, so we definitely need to do that. I feel like moving that up. And here's one for Tellurian. Uh, need fresh version of the German and French files so I can make sure that those are all in. Um, remove all unnecessary git string uses. That definitely seems un, uh, unprocessed yet. Naming issues, definitely. So in the game, there's no indication of what I should call these things at the top, what I should call these things at the bottom. You know, are these pages and these are tabs? Are these tabs and these are pages? Eh. And internally, I've definitely settled on one of those naming systems in the D-Tracker in some places and the other in other places. So some places call these things uh, tabs and these pages and some places call these pages and these tabs. Um, and Really, consistency is more important than correctness for that particular demarcation. Okay. Something we noticed when I did the import uh, of the Affidil information, which has now been heavily tainted by the Krell information, was that it knew that I had a an extra version of a of a mount deed done that I shouldn't have done. I had the large persons done and not the small persons. And part of the version 2 to version 3 upgrade needs to include that. In fact, let's go ahead and hoist that up because that is that's very important to get done. So if you are coming in with the large one and it should be the small one and you've got the small one completed, we should be we should be doing that under the covers. Okay. Cool. And 
And then, of course, there's all sorts of bugs and features uh, that are on the, uh, that'd be fun to get to someday. The bugs are more of a priority. I'd very much like to get through as many of these bugs as possible, uh, but some of them are just very silly. Uh, or one-offs. But they're on the list. Okay. Let's go ahead and move this on down. And kind of isolate to ourselves what things still are remaining from the, the big save file version change, version two to version three because there's that and there's some other features and whatnot. And if we can finish up all the save file stuff, then it gets us into a place where we can just do a release at any time. Uh, and people can use the new one while we're adding features and fixing bugs uh, to come. But all of the version two to version three upgrades needs to be pretty solid uh, and probably tested on multiple guinea pigs before the rest of it. Um, but before we, we do a re release incorporating that. Uh, so let's look at the size specific mount deeds. Add code to check for them. And what is that gonna look like, first of all? So in this um, in this lookup. We have the old deed info. If the old deed info is complete, then we need to, I think it's here, um, adjust any uh, size dependent amount of deed uh, IDs. to the correct size. AG, if a hobbit completed, what's our example? A writer of the free peoples, it would have gotten the large The only available version and 2.0 was large. Slide that into or convert the ID to the small version. So what we're looking for is I have this ID and I have this size, therefore I want to be this ID. And there's not that many of these uh, deeds that have a size. So the first thing we should do is come on into our uh, deed files and find the ones that matter to us. And we can do that um, maybe a little bit faster uh, with sublime text here. So going into the tracker data files, we're looking for uh, deed data. And I certainly didn't mean to drag it to where I just did. Okay, deed data. And what we're looking for in deed data, let's just make that sucker large, uh, is the large and small stuff. Uh, but specifically the mount keyword. So what we need to do is bind these together, right? We need to um, be able to correlate the two of them. Now the first thing we can do, make our life a little bit easier, is 
um, get the the name of the thing. Actually, let's go ahead and get any of the lore and just get it out of here. Don't care about it right now. Um, okay, so I J J K. Don't care about any of that. Type. Don't care about that. Not uh, Not available. Definitely don't care about that. Great. Okay. So this is what a minimalist version of that table would look like. And we can see all the larges are first, all the smalls are later, and in this list. But I think we're going to go ahead and do something like more like this. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and sort these lines. OK. So that pairs them up for us. In fact, let's go ahead and uh, get some line separations here. So what I'm thinking of is just a simple lookup table. It's simple. What I'm thinking of is a table. Maybe I don't need to new line everything. What I'm looking for is a table that has the IDs Uh, and for each one of these, so mount size correction table. We're going to have a bunch of these entries. Uh, and so we want to just go ahead and mark them up like so. And what we want is we want to just pass in large or small and get the correct thing back out. So this is going to be a table. And in this table, we're going to have two entries. Uh, so we're going to have uh, large in half uh, in, yeah, large there equals and we're going to have an ID, and then small equals an ID. Is this necessary? I knew which ones we had before. I think it's easier just to have it be complete. So given this ID, if it's supposed to be large, it should be what? Well, the answer is itself the same. Uh, given this ID, if it's supposed to be small, it should be this other one. Same thing. Given this, if it's supposed to be large, it should be that. If it's supposed to be small, it should be that. So that's that's our way to pair these up, is to say, given this and given the size that you uh, are, what uh, which one of these IDs should it have been? And I think just doing a full table like this might be a little bit easier if I come back in six months or 12 months and instead of just being like, why are only half the deeds even here? So uh, what is, what's really nice to do is give ourselves some labels. So we do want to come in and uh, label these. Now, I might try to automate this in a more uh, uh, port <laughs> in a, uh, uh, a setup that had a lot more complicated stuff in it. Uh, but I think that it's best to uh, just kind of manually do it at this point. Uh, large small, uh, large, small, maybe. I mean, manual, manual does have some problems. All right, so we're getting rid of those. So either of those if it's large, either of those if it is small. All right. And it continues. So for 2015 festival, uh, either large, 
either of them small. Okay. Uh, and it continues. Let's go ahead and do a little bit of automatic um, processing now that we've got a sense of what we're looking for. Uh, first of all, we can get those larges and smalls in there. A couple of votes says, is this redundancy necessary? And the answer is, I don't know. Um, the, my, my first thought of the algorithm is just, given the ID, um, find, you know, use the ID to index into this table, use the height of the character to index into what the ID should be. Um, and that saves me from having to do any logic. It's just given an ID that is a size-based mount deed, uh, just index into this table, into the size, and you have the ID that it should have been. Before I go too far, One thing that I'm uh, wondering about is for characters who have done a race change or otherwise been able to complete multiples of these, Deed Tracker would have had the wrong information anyway because Deed Tracker only had one of these. So, Kappa, your question is a, a reasonable one given that. DTracker 2.0 only had half of these entries, and we know which ones they had. So, is this over engineered? It might be. Does it matter if it's over engineered? This is only going to get imported during the version 2 to version 3 import. So, I guess the question is yeah. And if I have twice as many entries into this table, then I've got, you know, 30 instead of 15. I'll think on that for a minute. Well, let's, let's assume that this will work, first of all. And if it does work, then it could be that there's something better. But, you know, it's better to make progress inefficiently than not make any progress at all. So I'm going to go ahead and say full steam ahead. And hopefully it is correct. But the good news is, uh, with the automation we were able to do with those comments, this is a pretty uh, straightforward and fast process. Coming in, putting in the two larges, coming in, putting them in the two smalls. And done. And just repeating. Six. Got a large. Got a small. 
small a large and small large and small great so what we want is a place for this to live so let's come on in to the um, not the data files directory, the pile save formats directory. And here we want to go ahead and make a new, fi new file. Boy, I just am having trouble remembering what that one says. All right, new file, pile save formats, mount size correction table.lua. Great. And we have this. And let's comment what our thinking is. Given the ID of a V2.0 completed um, size dependent collection deed and the size of the current character, produce the deed ID that should have been completed. Example given, I know it's Latin, but I like to remember it that way. Um, Mount size correction table, completed ID, uh, current size. So completed ID equals Mount size correction table, completed ID current size. So that was my hope, was a, a very simple output line, or a, a code line to do the conversion um, at the cost of making a arguably hideous table <laughs> with, uh, with these details. So you have an ID, you have a large or a small, and that gives you the idea it should have been. And we don't have to care about whether we're changing anything or not, although we could keep track of that and say, hey, we converted this to that. Uh, I think I'm probably not going to do that, maybe with debug. Um, but the point is we don't have to care whether or not we made a correction. We just have an input, uh, two inputs, and we get one output. I think I'm happy with that. Okay, so we need to import this file. So let's make sure we get it named correctly. And in main, when we do this other import, let's go ahead and import, same thing, cube plugins, D tracker, uh, data files, uh, mount size correction table done. Now that's going to be in prior save formats dot. Nothing, nothing uh, to do about that, but we can go ahead and include that in our sample here so that when we copy paste this, super easy. So what we need is, we need to know if something is a mount ID. So, uh, local is mount deed equals, I'm going to just start off and say false. Uh, local, we need a size. Uh, let's get that from plugin functions. Mount. Okay, so we have a function, is mount deed. Fan fantastic. Uh, do we have a deed? <laughs> Kabamot says, what do you do outside of making plugins? I am a software engineer. So uh, I finish off my day job of staring at a computer and I come and stream staring at a computer. It's great. But I don't use Lua in my day job. I don't write plugins in my day job. So this is, it feels different. I use a lot of the same tools, Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code. I use uh, Fork to wrap around the Git, Git repository. I use Sublime Text for mass, mass manipulation. I use beyond compare for file comparison. I'm using these same tools, but the language of Lua for plugins, very different. The, the hosting of the plugin inside someone else's sandbox instead of running my own uh, programs uh, can feel very different as well. Um, and at the, you know, break time is, okay, gonna stop with that and actually attack an orc or something. So that's good. <laughs> Since says, uh, I used to do the same thing, develop for clients all day, and then develop my own stuff in my free time. Yeah, there's some of that. 
Uh, one, of the, one of the reasons I wanted to stream, uh, of, of the two reasons, is I thought there might be uh, a, a community of like-minded people who like developing plugins, whether or not it's for Lotro. Lots of games use Lua. Uh, and it was sort of a, every week I'm going to get at least two hours to commit to this because of all the other things that are tearing me and uh, pulling me in different directions. Uh, I have a chainmail project I need to work on. I've got a blanket I need to knit. Uh, I've got so many other things. Um, but while I'm streaming, I am technically working on plugins. <laughs> All right, so we need a deed. Do we actually have the deed? Um, all right, so we're getting uh, old deed info. We have this. So we had this IJ save index and Real question is, we had an I, J. Okay, so we can get a deed ID from that. Awesome. Okay, um, I need that information uh, that we're getting from the indices lookup. So I need that deed ID. So here's where we're going to do the uh, adjustment. And Red says, you knit? How cool is that? I do knit and crochet. Um, I'm not very fast at knitting, but uh, I have made some things, including a blanket that has gone missing. So what is one to do except just make it again? <laughs> Since this sounds very ADHD. I, I've never been diagnosed with such things, but who can say? Uh, M M Bo M Boko, sorry, says Lua language is just for plugins. I suspect you could use it for other things, but I wouldn't expect it to be used for, I don't know, quote unquote, serious development. Uh, Lua, Lua is a common plugin language, so the uh, the add-ons that you have for World of Warcraft, I'm pretty sure that's Lua. Uh, I've heard, um, 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 sorry. It's a game where you're on uh, Planet and uh, fact Factorio. Factorio, I believe, uh, plugins there are um, Lua as well. Here in Lotro, that's Lua because Lua is comparatively um, an easy thing to slot into your game or program or whatever, and it's comparatively easy language to learn uh, and easy language to read compared to some other ones. And so um, it, it kind of lowers the bar of entry for someone who wants to add it to their program, someone who wants to make something with it, all of these things. Uh, so I wouldn't say it's only for plugins, but it, it feels like it shines as a plugin language. Uh, Little Redhead says, what's your deadly decoy plugin called? Uh, oh, I found it, Hunter Deadly Decoy. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the uh, that is the deadly decoy plugin. Uh, and Little Redhead is asking about a plugin that if you are a, uh, what I want to say, a yellow line hunter, your decoy becomes a deadly decoy, and if it survives a full 15 seconds, it will blow up and damage things around it. And it's pretty cool, especially at low levels, especially on Treebeard when you have deadly difficulty. Um, but what we were noticing was uh, we weren't having a, a good sense of when that explosion was going to happen. When you want to grab a bunch of monsters and bring them close to it so it can go ahead and damage them all. Uh, and how much damage it could really take before it just died. And so, Hunter, Hunter Deadly Decoy plugin. Uh, da, da, da. And Synth, Synth agrees, a lot of games use Lua for add-ons plugins. Um, yeah, it, it's not exclusively for pl plugins, but um, there, there, there are some things where some languages just really uh, uh, come into their own, and some places where it might be harder. I wouldn't want to write a web server in Lua. I wouldn't want to write a, uh, a, a GUI desktop uh, application in Lua, but writing plugins, that's great. There's a lot of flexibility that comes with a Lua, uh, with a Lua language, um, where you can just toss data into an already existing table, because everything is tables. It's tables in, uh, all the way down. And so if you're like, oh, I have a button, a UI button, and I really just would like to store something in there, you just chuck it in there. Just add it to the table, it's fine. Uh, it's very loosey-goosey, and um, it, it's, a, it's the kind of thing where you would not normally be able to take a stock UI thing 
uh, and just add arbitrary data to it in another language. You'd want to subclass it, you'd want to do these other things. And here it's just like, I got a Lotro button and it also has this other thing. Uh, and as long as you do it consistently within, within your plugin, it's fine. It's, it's, a, it's a feature of the system, it's not a bug. Aaron Bard asks why we need to know this. I guess I would have to say which one of those chat items is this. Of a hundred deadly decoy. Um, yeah, uh, it's good. Um, we were noticing with missions on Treebeard at low levels, so level 20 or something, going into a mission uh, and the difficulty of the mission compounding with landscape difficulty and where we're playing on deadly. Um, we were noticing that the explosion power of the 100 deadly decoy was disproportionately um, uh, effective. So we were struggling to defeat these worms, so many worms, so many ice worms, and then you just bring on over and this thing goes poof and they all fall over. That's great. Okay, awesome. So we have, <laughs> Aaron Bart says, sorry, just tooled up as a yellow track hunter. No worries. I, I really like the, the, the deadly decoy. I like knowing how long it's gonna be left on it um, because you can't summon out another one while the first one's still around. Uh, so making that plugin was, was a lot of fun. I don't play hunter nearly as often as minstrel, uh, but just that extra, knowledge of I don't have to mentally keep a track a clock running on when did I put it out it's there I can know approximately how much health it has left uh, all, all of these things just made a lot of fun I mean it's a problem I would love a, a decoy that was less decoy and more bomb like hunter deadly bomb I put it out there and it does not constantly do taunts to try and get hit um, but the decoy itself, because it's like, look at me, look at me, look at me, will often end up taking a lot of hits. And so knowing just how fast it's taking damage was very, very helpful. Oh, we have raiders from uh, Christy. Hello. Well, I imagine people will be trickling in as they raid. Welcome to Plugin Along. We're talking about plugins. We're talking about how to write plugins. And we're talking about plugins in general. And Lotro even more in general. Synth thinks, as far as I gather, Lua is just meant for use for embedding within existing applications, which is why it works so well for plugins. Platform agnostics, which makes it ideal. And it came out when Python was still young and is easier to use than Tickle. Um, I haven't used Tickle in, I don't know, 20 years, and I only just poked it then, so I can't speak to the usability there. Um, I think it's very interesting as a language. It's, uh, Hello and goodbye, Christy. <laughs> if, you, if, if you weren't heading on out. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I mean, the language itself feels kind of uh, basic-y, like visual basic-y. Um, you, you know, you don't, you're not using braces for control blocks. You're just using words, you know, if, then, and. Oh, apparently Tickle Hill Syndex is a nightmare, especially for beginners. Cool. <laughs> Glad I dodged that one then. I was looking at it as a platform... Uh, agnostic um, system because it had um, half it was was language half it was like a, a little GUI library uh, yeah no that's 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 all I remember okay so we have a deed ID. Um, we have not actually had a need to get a deed from that deed ID, but let's go ahead and do that now. Uh, and so let me just go ahead and close a few of those windows. Uh, so in our plugin functions, we have, uh, well, we need is mount deed. So is mount deed equals that deed. Uh, but what we need is the deed. So we need a get deed uh, and get deed from ID. Get deed from ID with our deed ID. Is it a mount deed? Awesome. Um, so if is mount deed, then we need to do the thing where we do the, the size correction, which is this. 
Um, so we also need our current size. Mount size, mount. Apparently, it looks something like this. That's not uh, really pleasant. Okay, so race mount type. We're going to go ahead and do that. We need our race. Do we have our character? We have car name. Excellent. Oh, but that's not that's not right. What is character? Tickle TK graphics. Yes, that's what it was. Nintendo says you mean Tickle TK graphics libraries? I used a bit when doing graphical widgets in Perl. Not fun, but a great learning exercise. You definitely dodged a bullet there. That's it. I was thinking it was TK, but I couldn't remember the order. Tickle Tickle TK graphics libraries. Yeah, I think I feel like that was it. There was a desire for some sort of platform agnostic UI uh, for a project that I was working on for a tiny company at the time. And Java didn't really seem like it was a good uh, fit for what we were looking at. Uh, I didn't know about Qt at the time, or Qt as one could call it. Um, and so it was and it was well before mono was really a thing for uh, C Sharp, or you might have been in the C Sharp one days, but it was pretty early. Um, and so, yeah, so the Tickle TK came up in conversation. I was like, oh, let's look into it a little bit. <laughs> okay, just to confirm, are we getting a uh, string name here? Sure looks like. Awesome. All right, so we have car name. I gotta ask, why are we doing that? What's get race look like? Character. Okay, it's stored. I'm curious if it exists at this point. Let's assume it might not, in which case, let's just call my care get race on that. I think that'll be a, a safer bet. Okay, we have the race. We're gonna do the lookup uh, to get the mount type. And then we have all of these pieces together uh, where uh, local, uh, uh, no, actually deed ID equals prior save formats dot mount size correction table. Uh, we have a completed ID. We just want to call that deed ID. And we have the current size, um, which is race mount type. Eh, maybe that's uh, good to use race mount type there. All right, and race mount type, race to mount size lookup. That'd be nice to remember what's in there. Uh, so we have data files, race, no. Where does that come from? Where did I stick that? Deed lookup table, hmm, okay. Um, so you pass in the race, you get mount large, mount small, perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. And you pass that into here, large or small, you're getting an ID out. Perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. And let's go ahead and save that off. So local replacement deed ID equals that. If deed ID does not equal replacement deed ID, then we want to go ahead and say uh, debug replacing <sighs> Do 
I want the IDs? I guess I do. Uh, with and let's go ahead and do the, the name of it as well. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and re uh, replace deed ID with replacement. Got a member to be consistent. All uppercase for ID. Replacement ID. And then we have IDs. Can we get from that uh, the fully qualified name? Plug in functions. Uh, uh, fully. Get fully qualified deed name. Let's take a look. Um, that's taking a deed, not a deed ID. Uh, we have deed IDs, so we can do um, get fully qualified deed name. I think once upon a time I might have had a from ID, but it's okay. So uh, get fully qualified deed name from deed, and we just need the same thing, but get deed from ID, and there we go. That order is not right, but other than that, it's great. Okay, great. Another syntax uh, problem. All right, so if it's not the same, we're replacing it. That's setting deed ID equals to replacement deed ID, and we're done. Because at this point, we're using deed ID uh, as the index of the new one, where we've got the new deeds, that's the index. Uh, we're using old deed info's a, a timestamp and method. Okay. <laughs> Is that all we needed to do? Let's take a look and see uh, um, from a syntax perspective, did we write something that made sense? We did, it is loaded. However, the upgrade from 2.0 to 3.0 only fires once. So we're going to need to uh, force it to, to, uh, to do this for us. So in order to do that, we want to come into the uh, plugin data. And I think this is gonna be the last thing that we're doing is just doing a quick test here. So it's been delightful to have everyone here. If you have any last minute thoughts, comments, questions, let's start getting those into chat now. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, unload this plugin because you gotta have the plugins off when you're manipulating the data. And I'm really just concerned about Treebeard. Oh, there was an all service there. All right, I'll just leave it. Um, so all characters, we're gonna come on in and really we wanna get rid of everything. And we've got some version two files that are saved off. So let's come on in, plug it along. Uh, we've got our dtracker 2.0 save files and we're gonna copy those on over. And so what that's gonna give us is a fresh test bit. Fantastic. I've got an error message that I wasn't even expecting because I forgot to even check that. Let's come into our uh, source control here and make sure that the thing that we're importing is the correct thing. So up here, where we do an import, we can see um, we moved that uh, from data files to prior save formats, and this is also in prior save formats. I'm getting a lot more interested in dividing up my files into meaningful little buckets. So when we come in into uh, Lord of the Rings Online, uh, plugins, cube plugins, uh, deed tracker, I've got all the data files, they were just starting to get to explode in the number of files I was using for lookup tables. They're all here. I don't have to look at them if I don't want. The prior save formats. Um, look at me not labeling this version two. That feels like it would be an error to omit. Let's go ahead and add that in. Um, 
And I thought about multiple directories, like version 2, version 3, but I'm hoping to not have a lot of files in here. Uh, resource files, all of those images, those were already divided off. That was sort of where this is coming from. Turbine files, the files that were depending on coming from Turbine, I really wanted to not have those intermixing with the me files. I wanted to make it very clear what ones I was importing from Turbine. Um, and cool, that's it. Let me go ahead and see if this loads again and then answer your question, Telerian. Bam, okay. Uh, we can see in chat, replacing ID, class or sepic, race and social, writer of the free peoples, with ID, class or sepic, race and social, writer of the free peoples, which is an amusing thing to look at. Um, if we come in, in here and don't hide the completed deeds and just search for ride, uh, we can see ride of the free peoples. The small people's version is checked. This is so delightful because um, that's not been the case up until now. Aphidel has been uh, missing this deed because uh, the other one, the one I can't see, was checked. And Bart says, thanks for the stream. You're very welcome. Thanks for being here. Telerian, is there a hint for the next version of Deed Tracker? I think you're asking about timing and um, I want it to be out into the world in uh, this quarter of the year. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I think there's still a couple of things, um, as, as we're seeing, there's a couple of edge cases, a couple of issues to resolve before I feel comfortable. Because when it comes to save files, and it, this is my personal preference, um, I. If, when I am doing such a big save file change, there's the risk of data loss. Someone uh, has a file that does something I wasn't expecting, or brings some information I wasn't expecting, and you know now they feel like they've lost all of this information associated with their character. I don't want to have anyone feeling bad about that. Um, we do save backups, but we don't have a process for restoring those backups. That's a manual process. And you can imagine if you have 20 characters on a server coming on in here uh, and for each one of those, deleting the plugin data and renaming V2 backup uh, to be plugin data. And you do that for however many. And don't forget to come on into this uh, other file and update the version back to, there's no, there's no uh, graceful downgrading. Uh, and so, um, yeah, it, it it needs to uh, all the all the possible issues that we know about need to be addressed, and then it needs to be tested on a few people who are uh, willing to do that process of backing up their folder and trying it out just in case something goes wrong. Uh, and so, if you're interested in previewing that, if you're not already part of the Discord server um, I've got going, uh, it started out as just a D tracker Discord server. It's kind of morphed into a general purpose talk about plugin developments as well server. Uh, but there's a link here. I think it's still good. Check it out. It's supposed to be a permanent link. Uh, there's a link in the deed tracker about for discord.gg slash etc. Um, you can use that to join uh, and be a part of those uh, people who get to see it first before it's in general distribution. Because um, with all of this there's definitely going to be some, hey, back up your directory like this and then see what happens. <laughs> uh, and it wouldn't surprise me if there's some issues. Yeah, Synth says, what about scripting it? Like a, a bat file, a batch file on Windows or shell script on Linux for batch renaming. Yeah, it, it's, it's doable. Um, the reason I, I'm not uh, really planning on doing it is I'm hoping to catch all the issues before it happens and anything will be definitely a one-off. Um, but more to the point, the plugin is not uh, backwards compatible. The plugin is only going to be working with the version 3 structure. And so if you have version 2 files that can't convert to version 3, you need to stay on version 2 of the plugin, or in this case, version 1.8.6 or whatever it is. Like there, there is no working with the old system just because of some of the memory stuff we've done. Uh, and so if your files don't convert, you can't use the new system until we sort you out. Uh, and um, so copying those files back is sort of a last ditch resort. Like you've manually downgraded a 2.0 and this is a thing, but uh, yeah, th I'm hoping to do enough testing where if that's ever necessary, it's just going to be faster to walk someone through the process and maybe even do it for them than it is to write the script in the first place. Fingers crossed. <laughs> we'll see. 
Um, but great question. I, I, doing it as a batch file is good, but I'm also mindful that uh, the people at Lotro Interface would very much like us to not to ship too many things that look like programs with our plugin files. And batch files may, may be a part of the, you can't, you, you're not supposed to upload them. Uh, in fact, if we come on in to lotrointerface.com and bring that on over, I know, Chrome, you want to update. If I go ahead and do an upload, um, let's see, select an upload category. Let's just do other. Um, dun -dun. Yeah, so additional rules. Uh, oh, executable files are not allowed except for very specific cases. Um, so it, it could probably be okay. A batch file could probably be okay, but you know, it's one more hurdle uh, that you know any sort of a scan on their end has to come on over. Since says, I'd probably write it on principle just in case. I've done enough support calls to know that walking someone through something is often a meander with several stops and backtracks or within a straight line. That's a reasonable point. You know what? Let's go ahead and throw that in there. Consider pre-creating a script to downgrade from v3.0 to v2.0 uh, files. Delete, rename dot plugin files to version 3.0 dot plugin file. Um, move backups back into place. Update version in oh, whatever that's called. Cart out of that plugins. Now that's actually the, the one that strikes me as the most annoying is the groveling into that file uh, and doing that replace. Fortunately, quote v uh, 2.0 quote is a very distinct string, so you could just do a set and call it call it good or whatever the version is on your uh, operating system of choice. Um, yeah. Okay, so it's not a bad idea. Uh, maybe I'll overcome my inherent laziness and actually do that. If nothing else, going through the process my help, myself helps solidify just what that looks like if anyone else ever needs it. Uh, even if this batch file didn't get shipped with the plugin, it would be easy enough to send it over Discord or something and then get a lifetime banned for s sending malicious files over Discord. One hopes not. Awesome. Um, okay, let's come look at our source control and see if we can make some meaningful commits here. All right, added mount, uh, what do we call it? Mount size correction table. You know what, I'm just gonna call that a commit by itself. Let's go ahead and make sure we saved all we did. Great. Okay. Um, Let's do this in a couple of steps. Remove redundant import for prior save formats. So we're gonna stage that, stage that, and we're gonna go ahead and just do that part, and here, okay? Uh, we're gonna commit that, and then as a separate commit, we're gonna go ahead and convert added Code to convert incorrectly sized mount deeds during v2.0 to v3.0 upgrade. Awesome. So we've got the code, we've got the import table to let us do that. And I'll just do these to do file commits as a part of that. Awesome. Well, I gotta say, that's very satisfying to see more and more of this coming together and just uh, catching these edge cases now instead of uh, after the fact. So Tellurian, soon, as, as, uh, with a big, big old asterisk, but um, a matter of weeks, not months, uh, if all goes well. And then, of course, there'll be future updates uh, that'll be more uh, bug and feature-oriented and less 
everything changed oriented. Actually, one of the things that's upcoming one of these days is really looking at how the UI is doing its thing. Because right now, uh, as a historical curiosity, uh, whenever you click one of these tabs, we kind of throw away all the UI that was there and redo the UI, um, which has its conveniences. But um, if you are not hiding, uh, uh, sorry, if you're, if, if you're not searching, if you have to render all of the things, there can be a noticeable little delay, especially maybe on some older machines, there can be a delay between when you're clicking and the thing actually coming out. And so that would be nice to um, make that a little bit nicer. Um, but there's a potential memory cost where you're consuming more memory because it's all done at once. But on the plus side, uh, it, it makes clicking between the tabs much faster. Uh, so there, there's UI improvements to make just from a performance perspective, as well as uh, making it nicer to look at the code, because the code is not great for that. And we can always make it better. Awesome. Well, i got to say, this has been delightful. Thank you, everyone, for uh, being here, for jumping into chat whenever you thought it was a good idea to do that. It's uh, lovely to hear from you all. Um, I think we've gotten to the last of the questions, comments, and what not in chat. Um, if you had something you wanted to bring up and it didn't make it in, come on back next week or whenever, um, and we'll try to get to it then. Um, Shoreless Skies is taking a break today, so there's a no beneath your feet tonight. So I believe this is the last Tuesday stream on the official Lotro uh, stream channel here. Uh, but if Lotro's on your mind, I bet there's other people streaming it. <laughs> and with that, that's uh, all we're going to cover today. Thank you so much for joining me on this exploration of Lotro plugins. I do hope to see you here next week. And until then, keep plugging along. All right, bye-bye now.